Hello, everyone. Welcome to our daily AFCON show. Good to have you with us where we look at all the day's actions and look ahead to tomorrow's games. We'll get to Senegal's late, late goal that allowed the Lions of Taranga to earn their three points in just a moment. But first, let's begin with uh, Group C. France 24 Simon Harding joins us now from Yaoundé. Simon, there were a lot of one nils on this day two of the tournament. Morocco and Gabon both winning their first games of the competition. Yes, and let's uh, talk about the Atlas Lions against the Black Stars against uh, Ghana first because uh, that was the first heavyweight clash really of this uh, competition. Ghana, the four-time winners of the Africa Cup of Nations and Morocco, who of course have won the edition once uh, previously 45 years ago. So certainly Vahid uh, Halilodzic and his players trying to get back uh, to former glory. Sofian Bufal with the only goal of the uh, match in the 83rd minute to sink the Black Stars, Morocco, who uh, got the better of uh, Ghana in a very cagey, very tense uh, game, a game that had very few chances, quite bland, if truth be told, uh, to watch from a neutral point of view. But uh, Morocco, who deserved their victory because they were simply the better of the two uh, bland teams. Uh, just uh, prior to when uh, Bufal scored, uh, Bounou made a fantastic save to deny Joseph Paintsil, uh, the Ghanaian, who tried to curl it in from just outside the box. He didn't quite manage on that time. And Morocco did have one final opportunity, but certainly a big step in the right direction for Morocco toward qualification to the knockout stages. For Ghana, it means they're going to have to make sure they win at least one of their next two games if they want to uh, qualify. The other match was certainly very entertaining as well. Uh, the Comoro Islands playing in their first ever Africa Cup of Nations uh, final uh, group stage uh, draw match uh, who took on uh, Gabon. Gabon missing their talismanic uh, player and striker Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang who is recovering from a COVID-19 in uh, affection and it must be said that uh, uh, the Comoro Islands did themselves proud on their first uh, match. They didn't uh, give in to the moment. They certainly played uh, to their strength. It was a very open game probably the best game we've seen at the tournament uh, so far but uh, a goal uh, by uh, Gabon in the first 15 minutes condemning uh, Comoro Islands to a first defeat and Gabon taking a big step towards qualification as well. They uh, will have uh, their big players returning including Aubameyang in the coming week and for the next match uh, for the game so it is certainly uh, a possibility for Gabon who were considered outsiders at the start of the tournament to perhaps uh, create an upset and knock out either Morocco or Ghana already uh, from uh, the group stages. We'll just have to wait and see. Simon, we'll be back with you in just a moment to talk about what to watch tomorrow. But first, let's take a look at those standings of Group C as they stand tonight after a day two of the tournament. No surprises there. Of course, Morocco and Gabon both at the top of the table tied with three points each and one goal each. And of course, the Comoros and Ghana at the bottom of the table with zero points each. More action in the days to come. Turn our attention now to Group B. Favourite Senegal barely managed to claim victory over Zimbabwe thanks to a late, late goal by Liverpool star Sadio Mane. The other group game saw Guinea prevail over Malawi. Also one to nothing. There's the standing there's, uh, standings there for Group B. France 24's James Vazina has the Group B roundup from the city of Bafoussam. Senegal sign out of their first game here at the Africa Cup of Nations with a narrow 1-0 win. A score that's pretty much uh, just about represents the level from today because it was a big challenge for them. Uh, a win that came in the final minute uh, as a penalty was accorded for the Senegalese uh, with Sadio Mane uh, slotting that in for them to bring them the three points after a fortunate handball. Uh, I, I gave them that win that they were so much looking for uh, that they tried to go get for, for the whole game uh, but unfortunately couldn't quite break through uh, the Zimbabwean defence. Uh, Zimbabwe, of course, uh, who put up a fight, uh, who was struggling at first, but did miss out on some crucial opportunities. Same went for Senegal. Uh, Sadio Mane couldn't quite get it on the end of some of the balls there. Uh, of course, though, uh, Senegal, as we know, uh, were missing a number of key players, uh, either due to COVID issues uh, or uh, their later arrival. Ismail Assar, uh, for example, was not here. Uh, could his impact uh, been different on the game had he have been? We don't have the, quite the 
answer just yet. However, uh, of course, today's game is a big wake-up call for them. They leave with three points, uh, but when we spoke uh, to former player uh, El Aji Juf as well as current head coach uh, Aliou Cisse, well, both of them uh, are aware of the dangers that Zimbabwe uh, posed uh, and know that they're going to have to be careful going forwards. In Africa, there are no small teams. The people who think there are small teams are risk to se de se tromper. Euh, cette équipe euh, zimbabwéenne, n'oubliez pas, a tenu un échec quand même, l'Algérie, en partout, qui est champion d'Afrique. On sait que ça va être euh, dur, on sait que ça va, ça va se jouer dans le mental, physique, euh, euh, sur le terrain aussi, mais je crois qu'on est bien outillé, on a les joueurs pour. Well, after that, Guinea took on Malawi. Guinea managing to open the score in the 35th minute as Sila managed to slot one in uh, in front of pretty much an open goal. Uh, Nabi Keita also providing uh, some excellent work over in the midfield. A thought, however, for Malawi. Malawi, who've been suffering with a massive uh, outbreak of COVID-19 cases in their squad, uh, out of the 12 players who were absent uh, for their opening game, most of them have contracted COVID-19. So that, of course, uh, brought in a lot of mix-up for the team. Uh, they did manage to struggle and they were looking pretty good and they managed to put on uh, a, a decent performance, but of course uh, that is something uh, that has really uh, dampened uh, their performance here today and even though supporters were behind them, uh, they couldn't quite get that equaliser uh, they, they were so much looking for. Uh, so they unfortunately leave uh, without any points uh, as Guinea take all three available to them and that wraps up uh, all the games for Group B today. Uh, more will be to come in that group on Friday once again here in Bafusam uh, but for now Guinea supporters are delighted with their team's performance today. Notre, notre objectif c'est de la coupe, c'est de ramener la coupe et faire la play. Hein? C'est la coupe. Mais on a dit, nous, a, a dit le président par intérim, il a dit il a dit si vous ne ramenez pas la coupe, la coupe ah, restez au Cameroun. Restez au Cameroun. Donc on Donc, est dans cet est objectif. L'objectif est déjà là. C'est ça, Bingbiso de zéro. Oh well, they better bring the cup then. Let's turn our attention now to this Tuesday's games. Egypt's pharaohs have won the competition a record seven times, but their last victory was in 2010, one year before current captain and Liverpool superstar Mohamed Salah made his international debut. Ahead of Egypt's opening game on Tuesday, Salah noted that the Africa Cup is one of the few titles he's never won, and he hopes this will be the year he finally wins a title with his national team. I would love to win something with the country. I came here every time I come to the national team. I'm proud to wear the shirt. Um, I give my best to, to the team. I don't think we are the first candidate, candidate this, for this tournament, but we do our best to win it. We have a good coach. We have a good team. Um, we have a very good group. And I play for the national team for 10, 11 years now, so I know we have a very good team. Um, so we give, we give our best and hopefully we win it. All right, Simon Harding joins us now once again from Yaoundé. Simon, we know Egyptians are a passionate country when it comes to football and there is a lot of hope ahead of the Pharaoh's opening game. And also a feeling and a sentiment of having uh, to... Uh, uh, earn their stripes again, uh, Wasim, because uh, we remember that three years ago in front of their home crowd, they went out in the last 16 against South Africa. They were favourites uh, to win the tournament in Egypt on home soil in front of their home fans. And that was uh, very much a wake-up call for this Egyptian team. Now, Mo Salah can say that they have a good team, but it's certainly not the team that, as you mentioned, uh, was uh, steamrolling over African opposition a decade ago. And Egypt are going to have to prove that they're a team to contend with. And not a one-man team because of course Mohamed Salah is probably the best player in the world at the moment but he is going to have to have uh, his work cut out for him and uh, Egypt are going to have to find a way to not play everything through Mohamed Salah which was one of their downfalls in the previous edition. Now of course Egypt start the, their campaign with a massive clash against Nigeria, the Super Eagles who they themselves are one of the teams to be reckoned with in the tournament. Uh, Nigeria, who lost very narrowly to uh, the winners uh, three years ago, Algeria, last minute free kick by Riyad Mahrez, knocking them out in the semi finals. Probably the team who ran Algeria the closest in that tournament. 
but the Super Eagles do have a lot of players uh, missing for a variety of reasons. Covid, uh, players who were stopped from travelling from their respective clubs. Uh, that is the case, for example, of Emmanuel Dennis of Watford, of Watford in the Premier League. So Nigeria and the Nigerian FA have had to contend with a lot of problems uh, coming into this tournament, and it is going to be very interesting to see exactly how they line up in what system with some key players missing, particularly in attack with Victor Ossiman, Napoli star striker, also recovering uh, from a fac fractured draw and from COVID. So that is going to be, of course, one of the games to look forward to, uh, 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 a match that is going to decide uh, most probably who finishes top of uh, the group and a match which should provide plenty of goals and sparks. Uh, difficult as well to look past Algeria. The reigning champions make their way into the competition against uh, Sierra Leone, Wasim, and that will be another massive game to look forward to. Simon Harding, thank you very much for that. Egypt versus Nigeria and Algeria, ver uh, excuse me, Egypt versus Nigeria and Algeria versus Sierra Leone, both game two games to watch on Tuesday, day three of the Africa Cup of Nations. Thank you very much for watching this AFCON Daily Show. Don't forget, you can catch this show every evening here on France 24 at around 11.40 p.m. Paris time, 10.40 p.m. GMT.